What's going on guys? My name is Suboptimal and I'm just a typical Indian software engineer. In this video, we'll go over how I was able to build a 3D tic-tac-toe using 3JS. Let's start with a demo where I go over some of the key features for this tic-tac-toe implementation. So the first thing I want you guys to notice about this project is that when you refresh the screen, it's going to create a new game. And it's going to animate the board. So I can start playing and you can notice here that all the player actions are also animated. And, uh, you know, if a player wins, then it's going to determine that by creating a strike across the diagonal or column or row in which the player won. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to initialize a scene. Now this constructor is taking in the ID to the canvas on my HTML page. And what it's gonna do is bind everything to that canvas. It's going to initialize a camera. It's gonna initialize these orbit controls, which is allowing me to like do this sort of movement and allow me to like zoom in, zoom out. Basically, this is just initializing the scene. But you know, that's not where the interesting part of the code is. The interesting part is right over here, where we're actually constructing our tic-tac-toe board. So these first three lines, we're just basically setting up 3JS. Um, nothing's actually happening here except inside of this line where I'm actually creating the board. So let's take a look at what this is doing. Inside of the create board function, I'm creating the vertical and horizontal board lines. So this is the function, right? Uh, it's basically, you know, I'm creating the left, the right, and the top and the bottom. So I'm calling this function called board line and this is the core function that is constructing these uh, one, two, three, four separate geometries. And all it's doing is, you know, it's constructing a geometry and a material and it's creating a board line from that, setting the offset, the X and Y offsets, and as well as setting the scale to zero. Uh, coming back up here for the vertical lines, we're going to pass in four for the X value. So because vertical lines are not too wide, 64 for the Y value, because you know, these lines have to be super long and four for the Z value. And there's two lines here, the left line and the right line. The left is at the negative 12 offset. The right is at the positive 12 offset. And we're just adding these in. This code is basically setting up the board for us. But if you sort of think about it a little bit, you'll notice that the scale here is zero. So technically, this code should not display anything on our screen. What I have to do is animate this. So let me go to the next page here. What I'm doing inside of the main thing where I constructed my tic-tac-toe board and added it to the scene is I'm scaling the objects up. So I'm creating this animation function that's going to run every single frame. So when the board is initialized, it's going to start animating. And what the animation function is doing is it's taking in all the board lines that we've added in our previous section. And for each of them, it's scaling them up. If I refresh this browser, you'll see that you'll notice that when the board gets initialized, it animates these board lines. So now that we have our tic-tac-toe board, what we need to construct are these hidden tiles. When you're constructing tic-tac-toe in a two-dimensional situation, this is not really necessary, right? Because if you are at the top left of the board, then you know that the index of that board is going to be zero, zero. If you're at the top right, you know it's going to be zero, two. But the thing with three dimensions is that the board could be rotated. So it's kind of impossible to know where the user is playing the game. So what we need to do is this thing called raycasting. And in order to raycast, what we need to do is set up invisible objects such that when the user presses it, we can uh, determine that is where the user clicked and then we can swap with the X or the zero. What's happening here is, you know, inside of the create board function, after we built the board, we also wanna add these hidden tiles. And um, all I'm passing in here is the center coordinates of where the tile should be. This is the top row, the middle row, and the bottom row. So basically all we're doing is setting up these tiles so that we can do this thing called raycasting. So I'm setting up a window event listener on mouse down. And when the mouse is down, I'm basically what I want is to remove these squares. And I want to remove the one that the user clicked. Fortunately, 3JS has this raycaster function, which makes it really easy to do this. All we're going to do is get where the mouse is relative to the screen. 
And once we do that, we're going to set up the Raycaster. And what this is going to do is give us a list of intersecting objects. And when the object uh, has been pressed, when a hidden tile has been pressed, all we're doing is getting the ID, the index of that hidden tile by you know checking the uh, unique identifier from it. And then we're just going to remove it. Let's say I start pressing these things. You're going to notice that these hidden tiles start getting removed. And basically what we want to do in the future is instead of just removing them, we also want to replace them with the actual player values. So at this point, we have our Raycast working. And what we want to do is instead of just, you know, removing these hidden tiles, we want to add circles or uh, X's to our tic-tac-toe board. And here what I'm doing is updating the constructor so that we can start tracking these X circles and crosses. And I'm also going to track the current player as well as a copy of the board. And I'm also going to create this function called add circle or cross, which is going to check the current players. The current player is uh, player X. Then we're going to add a cross at the offset and we're going to update the board at the offset as well. So if, you know, if I click if, if a user clicks like at the top left over here using the x, y offsets, then this is going to be x and this is going to be x as well. Now, otherwise, if the user is in O, then the same thing is going to happen. And at the end of each iteration, we're going to want to switch the current player from the x player to the O player. And so we had our initial mouse down event. And basically, we can just add this code right over here where it's saying is we're getting the X and Y offset of these squares. And once we have that, we're just going to add circle or cross and that's going inside of our tic-tac-toe board and that's going to handle everything. So right now what we get is this thing right over here. So as I start playing this game, right, you're going to notice that, you know, the X and circle crosses are getting populated as so. And so the last thing that we need to do is to just determine when a user wins. We check for that once a user has added a cross or circle because we know that the only time someone can win is right after they make a move. Uh, as soon as they add a cross or circle, then we can check these win conditions. And what are the win conditions? So there's three row win conditions three column win conditions, and then there's the two diagonals. So I've got the code to check for the row win condition here. And let me just walk it through with you guys. We know that there are three rows. So we're going to go from let n equals zero to n equals less than three. And what we're going to do is check the row. If the board copy at i zero is equal to i one, and the board copy at i one is equal to i two, then we've got a winner. Same, and, and basically we check Every single time a user makes a move, we check all possible win combinations. If it is the case that the user has won, then we can create a strike. And basically the strike is the line that goes through the circle or the X. And uh, we set the offset position of that strike, and then we add it to our board. So again, the strike is pretty simple. It's just one of these lines that it's just like a board line, basically, except it's a little bit thinner than that. So um, if I play this game, right, you'll notice that as soon as I win, there you go, you got the row win. And let me refresh the page, I added the column win as well. So if a user wins by column, you know, you get the column victory. And if a user wins by the diagonal, you get the diagonal victory. So yeah, that's going to be it for today. Hopefully you guys now have a little bit of an understanding of how to build a tic-tac-toe using 3JS. If you've got any more questions, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at suboptimaleng, and you can always check out the code on the game dev repository under my GitHub. As always, if you guys enjoyed the video, then feel free to leave a like. That really does help me out. And, you know, consider subscribing for more suboptimal content just like this. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.